long time ago, there were many, many people on the earth. And everyone did whatever they wanted to without love for each other. They cared more about themselves than they did about other people. God was very sad because everyone had forgotten his way. Everyone, that is, except for Noah and his family. Noah and his family worked very hard, and they kept all of God's ways in their hearts. All right, that's enough for today. You boys can finish that tomorrow. Uh, uh, but Father, we almost had it. Just a few more minutes. God knows how hard you work, Japheth, my boy, and so do I. But God also wants us to keep up our strength so that we can do His work. You're right again, Father. You must be the wisest man in the world. Me? Oh, no. I might be the happiest man in the world, but the wisest? I think not. But enough talking. We'd better hurry. Ah, I think we're having your mother stew tonight. And we wouldn't want it to get cold. <laughs> Noah and his family had a hard life, but they loved each other very much, and they always had enough to eat. Noah never forgot that it was God who made all of those things possible. And thank you, God, for everything you've given to me and my family. Thank you for the strength to work hard, and for fields that are good for growing, and for the food on our table. Amen. Amen. What's this? It sounds like we have visitors. Well, you must be hungry. Dear, will you please bring me a bit of meat and a bone from the stew? I think our friends need something to eat. All of God's creatures are important. There you go. Enjoy. Nothing like a good dinner, isn't that right? You're a good man, Noah. More? <laughs> One night after supper, everyone kissed Noah goodnight and went to bed. But Noah didn't go to bed at his usual time. He had a strange feeling. You look sleepy, dear. Uh. Why don't you go to bed? Are you coming? Soon. I don't feel tired. I think I'll go out and look at the stars for a bit. Noah went out of his house for some fresh air. He had a feeling he couldn't explain. He didn't know that God was leading him outside. Ooh, what is this? Noah? God? Is that you? Yes, Noah, it is. Please listen to the important things I have to say to you. Noah, people do not love one another as they should. So I have decided to wash the earth with a flood and start over. This is terrible news! Don't be afraid, Noah. I'm telling you this because you are the only man who still has me in his heart. I have chosen you and your family to help me start over. Listen carefully. I want you to build a boat, Noah. An ark. So much to do! Oh, I've got to get my boys and have them help me! Wake up! I need you to help me with a big project! Yes, I'm serious. An ark. A big, big ark. 
<laughs> it's okay. Go ahead and laugh. You'll see. <laughs> This field should be big enough. Build it from fresh, sticky wood. Make it 450 feet long, 75 feet across, and 45 feet high. Seal the planks with tar. <laughs> and inside, build an upper, middle, and lower deck. Hi, Hi. Make an opening all the way around the arc, just below the upper deck. And last, put a door in the side big enough for the largest animals of the earth to walk through. Next, bring two of every animal on the earth with you, each with a safe place on the ark. Noah and his family worked very hard. Father, we're finished! Yay! We have done well, my sons. <sighs> Where is this old man who says a flood is coming? to the crazy fool. My father is no fool. Only a fool would build a big silly boat in the middle of his field. <laughs> now let's take a good look at... <gasps> you really are a crazy old man. Anyone who would do this... You would be wise to listen to what I say. God has told me that a terrible flood is coming. So much to do, so little time. Father... It's fair to warn them, Shem. 
Warn us about what? The flood that's never coming? <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Let's leave this crazy old man alone. There, there now. Thank you for helping us. I guess we made ourselves some friends, eh? <laughs> and it looks like we have our first passengers. Now, if I can only figure out how we're going to find all the rest of the animals. Shh! Quiet now, you two. Can't you see he's trying to think? Father, look! It's a miracle! And it was a miracle. God had done something wonderful. He brought two of every animal to the ark. And they were on their very best behavior. Even the lions lay down with the lambs. Tigers? Wildebeests? <laughs> Zebras? Whoa! <laughs> God will protect us all. Well, that does it. Everybody's here. What do we do now, Father? We wait for the rain. It doesn't look like we'll have to wait long, Father. Look! Suddenly, the clouds began to gather and cold winds began to blow. The time has come to take your family and the animals onto the ark. Soon the rain will start. Let's go! Everybody on? All clear down here. Ready. I'll close the door. Be afraid, my dear. God will protect us all. <laughs> the rain covered the whole earth. Even the highest mountains disappeared underwater. Except for the animals and people on the ark, there was nothing else left. During their long trip, Noah and his family became very close with the animals. They were all good friends. Groundhog time, and monkeys climb, and long-eared rabbits run. This bunch, I have a hunch, we'll have fantastic fun. Hyenas laugh at the touch of rats, skinny legs and men. Wild toads amuse the kangaroos with leapfrog up on deck. Noah and his Two by two, and the 
Noah watched to see when the rain would stop, but it just kept coming down. It rained and rained like it would never stop. It rained for a month, then another week. Then, after 40 days and 40 nights, the rain stopped. Noah was so excited, he called a family meeting. I've called you all here because I have a surprise for you. The rain has stopped. What? That's wonderful! <laughs> True. When do we get off? Well, I think if all goes well, the ground should start to peek through in about another, oh, six months or so. <sighs> Everybody was disappointed to hear this news, because although they all loved one another, they were all pretty tired of being on that ark. But they waited patiently. Many months passed. did you see? Same as always. Aww. Nothing but sea. We're never going to get off this boat. How are we even going to know if the land is dry? How are we even going to know if we're anywhere near land? This is hopeless. Now what kind of talk is that? Are you the same men who helped me build God's Ark? Hasn't he looked out for us this long? Of course. Father is right. Uh, but can we at least try to find out if there's any dry land? This got Noah thinking. Finally, he got an idea. He went and got one of the ravens and brought him to the slit in the ark. Then he let him go. He thought if the raven found land, he might bring something back with him. But when the raven returned, he didn't bring anything with him. So Noah decided he would try letting a dove go. Good luck! <laughs> but the dove returned with nothing as well. But Noah knew God wouldn't abandon them. He waited a while longer, then one last time, he sent out the <laughs> dove again. This time, when the dove returned, it brought something back. In its mouth, it carried a branch from an olive tree. Father, this is wonderful news. We must be very close to dry land. Yes, son. If you believe in God, he will save us all. And you protected us too. And sure enough, very soon, the ark landed on top of a tall mountain. When it was safe to come out, 
God spoke to Noah again. Noah, you and your family and the animals can come out now. The earth is dry. Go out into the world and have many children and tell them about me. And so you will always know that I won't ever flood the world again. I'm going to leave a gift in the sky after it rains. Something to remind you of my promise. And so Noah and his family thanked God for all he had done for them. And Noah's sons had many, many good and strong children who loved God very much. <laughs>